Curious if anyone else feels this. Uh, languishing. It's when you're not really like happy, you're not depressed, but you're kind of just like going through life. You feel like you're being pushed around. Um, you don't really know what to do, not motivated, but you're not, you're not depressed. You're kind of just, just going. What I've learned in the past hour has completely changed everything I think. H how I think, I mean, about meditation, visualization, breath work. Usually how it goes is I wake up and I feel, I'm sure a lot of you can relate. So I use all these tools to try to feel better because I know those emotions are going to, you know, bring those events to me. But what would happen if you completely let go of the idea that you know exactly what you want? Because face it, do you really? We say, oh, I want this and I want that. And then once we actually get those things, let's just move on to the next. Do we actually know what is going to make us fulfilled? Or are we just constantly playing this game of thinking that our happiness is outside of us? And so this whole non-duality perspective is to realize that you always have access to those emotions. And the things that are holding us back from tapping into that state of creativity, of flow, intuition, awe, appreciation, gratitude, love, is our attachment to ourself and that we have to be someone who can do something. It is in those moments where you can say, you know, I don't know what'll make me happy. Your ego's like, whoa, what are you doing? We've pretended we've known this whole time and we've been protecting all these beliefs we have from others this whole time because we want to know everything. Let it go. When you are not attaching your identity to your beliefs, to your thoughts, to your emotions, and you are able to let that innate higher intelligence express itself through you, that is when the magic happens. And that's not a woo-woo thing. There's some very awesome slime mold experiments showing that like very basic slime mold cells can, when they're working together, um, sorry, when they're working by themselves, the whole operation fails, but they can learn to work together and have a symbiotic relationship with everything. And they take up different roles in the slime mold. So the slime mold It'll have food right here, have some oats. It'll branch out to try to find new food. It'll branch out this way too. If the branches connect to each other, it knows that it came in contact with itself and then it'll start to branch out the other way because it knows there's not food here. So it's able to recognize itself. Keep in mind, the slime mold does not have a nervous system or a brain. Okay, when you put all the slime mold in a maze, and then you put food at different points. The slime mold will condense into the most efficient ways every single time in order to get to that food. Okay, they did um, Tokyo. They had this main central location of where the slime mold started. And then all the other areas were suburban areas. And the slime mold um, sorry, those suburban areas were marked by oats. And so the slime mold found the most efficient way to branch out in order to be able to access all those nutrients. And it does it in the most efficient way. But it replicated what the engineers who designed the roads in Tokyo took years to do. And the slime mold did it in like an hour or like a day, however long it took. Meaning, it appears that on the very smallest level of life, there's this organization that happens. There's this intelligence about it that it just knows where to go. And so this is what I'm talking about, getting out of our own way. I did something completely different today. I just surrendered to that higher intelligence. It doesn't, it, 
there's no name there's no anything like that just whatever this higher intelligence that organizes itself and expresses life through i'm allowing that to come through me and i'm saying i don't know what i know what'll make me happy what i know will make me happy and it's like when i said i don't know it's like my brain opened up i fell into the present i feel creative i feel inspired we don't have to hold on to all of this weight of having to be right all the time. Oh, excuse me. All of this weight just blocks that innate higher intelligence coming through us. Mycelium also does this. There's very fascinating experiments with trees who are able to recognize their offspring <clears throat> and give nutrients to their specific offspring before it gets to the other trees. There's this innate intelligence about nature. And I really believe it can work through us. I'm not claiming to know what it is. I'm not giving it a name. But it seems like there's this, this organization about the smallest fundamentals of life that just happen. So being able to get out of our own way just say I don't know accept that see how you feel very curious very curious how that languishing stops or if it stops when we think like oh, I have to be doing something. You know, I have to be productive because I'm on social media and I'm seeing all these people post this stuff and they're doing all these important things. And I'm just sitting here feeling bad about myself. Let it go. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to be anyone. You don't have to fill anyone's expectations. Get out of your own way and drop that attachment to your identity that you have to be someone who can do something. It is when this happens that you tap into that creativity. And then you do stuff. You have to care. You have to, you have to let go of me in order to experience everything. Very curious to hear y'all's thoughts. Non-duality, game changer. <laughs>